I want to talk about lazy loaded and responsive images in Svelte. So uh, Svelte has a beautiful um, NPM module called Svelte-Image. And luckily, the, this uh, module already follows the spirit and the philosophy of Svelte. It tries to do as much as it can, uh, all of it, at build time which means it will try to re resize your images and do a bunch of things at build time, um, at compile time, and that's great. And that's the philosophy of Svelte. And, but before we get into that, uh, some of uh, the audience may not know what lazy loaded and what responsive images are. And even those of you who might know what responsive lazy loaded, loaded images are, it wouldn't hurt to get a refresher. So let's take a look at that. So here's uh, let's go um, go to the 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 home page the github page for this uh, project it's called svelte-image and then uh, hopefully you can see this uh, uh, yeah svelte image uh, in github.com and in here we will um, there is a uh, you can read the documentation which we we definitely should but there is a, a demo page, so let's open that in new tab. And here's the demo. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but initially there was a blue placeholder uh, in its place. Let me just show you. Um, uh, if I right click and uh, reload, you see that blue placeholder? If I, again, reload, you'll see a blue placeholder before you see the image. And then eventually the image shows up. Uh, now, of course, one, some people might think, oh man, that's a lot of work. Did these people create blue placeholder image version of these images? And then, you know, right. Uh, so first they sat down and, and processed each of the images to create a lightweight placeholder and then wrote a whole bunch of JavaScript code to load the placeholder first and then the image. No, no, no. And all that is is achieved by making these images responsive and lazy loaded. Uh, so let's talk about lazy loaded first. Uh, lazy loaded means that it is the image is loaded only after it enters the viewport. So uh, right now, of course, they have all, all been uh, downloaded. So you don't see them showing up a little bit late. But let me go into inspect uh, the developer inspect window. And I go to network. And I'm going to change this uh, this network uh, speed from online full fast to slow 3G. All right. So now, once I do that, let me now um, right click and say empty cache and hard reload. Watch what happens. Things will go much slower now. And as they are going slower, at first you will see the image placeholder showing up. You see in blue color. And again, I'm simulating slow network connection. This is what um, a mobile phone in a you know in a, in a market that has slower networks will 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 behave like. So as you can see, there there is this blue placeholder, and then eventually the actual image shows up. And this is what lazy lo loading is all about. Okay, now. Um, now, what about responsive images? Responsive is, of course, some people might think that their image resizing itself uh, to a smaller size, that is responsive. That's part of it, of course, but the whole that's not the whole story. There is more to it than that. So let me show you. I made this thing very small, or I could just go into the mobile uh, view. So here, I'm in mobile view, and, uh, or well, let me not, be in the mobile view. Yeah, let me just make a small viewport. And now let me right click and say empty cache and hard reload. So once I do that, again, I have network, uh, slow network simulation on. So this will take longer. So here you can see all these blue color placeholders and these placeholders eventually get replaced by the actual image, right? And you can see those images being loaded. But the interesting thing you sh might make note of this fact that it is uh, downloading the f something dash 400 webp and 400 every time it it downloads the 400 webp. Now let me clear this network log, 
and I'm going to resize this window to a larger width and then pay attention to what happens in the network log. Whoa, look at that. So there it is. It, it loaded the 1200 pixel version of the image. So what happened was, uh, it at first we were in a much smaller viewport, so it loaded the 400 pixel version of the image. And then when we increased the size, and you can ignore these 800 pixel being because they were all canceled. Uh, the downloads were canceled because because the we very quickly resized the the size of the uh, the viewport. So. 1200 pixel versions are now loaded. This is true responsiveness, which means that the browser loads a lower resolution version of an image when the viewport is small, and uh, it then downloads a higher resolution version if the viewport is large. Uh, but the thing is, it, if I clear this network log and make it small again, it is not going to download a low resolution version again because high resolution version is just good enough. It, it serves the same purpose. So because it has already downloaded the high resolution version, it doesn't download the low resolution. On the other hand, if I, again, empty cache and re hard reload, and um, mind you, I still have slow 3G being simulated. And now if I look at these things, once again, 400 pixel versions are being downloaded. If I clear this network log and make this much bigger, and now you can see that it will try to download the 1200 pixel version. So again, going from smaller to larger, it will download again. Going from larger to smaller, it doesn't need to download. It'll just use the higher resolution version. Okay, so that's what responsive images are. Uh, so this Swelt image, NPM module, it makes all of this possible. It has a lot of goodies, and I will show you all, all those goodies very soon. So uh, let's start with the features. What are you going to get? It will generate resized versions of the original image. It will generate a placeholder with a data URL. It will do lazy loading, and it will inject picture and um, an SRC set, it generates, it uh, it brings uh, the SRC, uh, it injects the picture tag and SRC set attribute. We'll see what those are. Let's start with an empty project. So here in my VS code, I'm going to do what we always do to start a new project. I'm going to say npx dig git celt.js template, and then uh, create a new project called Svelt image demo. All right. Press enter and uh, let's open that project. Swelt image demo. There it is. Okay, so whenever we uh, get a new project, uh, the first thing we do is um, I can do npm install here. Oops, sorry, my, my misspelling, npm install, right. And uh, that'll download all the dependencies, including Svelte. And I don't want anything from this, uh, the basic uh, template. I'm just gonna get rid of all of them. Okay, so uh, the main.js, this props, let's get rid of that. And in app.svelte, I'm going to delete everything. I don't want anything. Okay, so that deletes everything. Okay, now mm, let's put a simple basic image. Okay, so I'm going to um, copy a folder of images that I already have. And, uh, and, and and let me just do that. So this is my images folder and I'm dragging and dropping it into my public folder. All right. 
So add folder to workspace. All right, so now my public folder has, okay. It got dropped in the wrong place. Let me just move it to public folder here. Come on, did it do that? It's not doing that. Hmm. Okay, I can, I can do it here. Move images, wait. Where is it? LS minus L A uh, public. Oh, it looks like it was moved. Public. Hmm. Where's the images folder? Where am I? Uh oh. I don't know what happened here. That was not my intent. Uh Remove folder from workspace. Yeah, I, I made a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. Um, okay, let me let me just move this. Uh, move from my desktop images to public to current directory slash public images. Okay, simpler. All right. So now I have uh, I have this images folder in my public folder and it has a bunch of images okay let's not worry about what those are i'll just you start with the spinspire logo okay so here's the spinspire logo let's put that in our app.svelte okay um img src equals uh, low images slash logo dot png and since this is swelled you should add alt so alt attribute is almost required it's not required but it's recommended so now that we have the basic app dot swelled let's run it so i clicked on dev and at this point I have localhost 5000. Let's reload. And I have my uh, Spinspire image being shown. If I resize, you will see that it doesn't do much. I mean, it just uh, it remains the fixed size. OK, so that's, you know, that's because it's not a responsive image. Um, and that's it. Let's let's add. Let's now uh, control C terminate this and say npm install minus minus save dev svelte image so this will download svelte image npm module and add that to our package.json as a dev dependency once that finishes you will see that um, we will be able to add this Svelte image to our build process. And once we add it to our build process, there will be, um, you know, pretty interesting things we can do, do with it. So here, um, this is my uh, rollup config.js. This is standard. I, I got it from um, from the template. So import image from Svelte image. So this is, now I'm not uh, inventing this. This is all documented in here. Uh, in this GitHub page, you have to import image from Svelte image. And then in your Svelte um, plugin, you add preprocess dot 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 image. So let me just copy this. I'm just, I'm gonna use this. So back here, I imported the image from Svelte image, and now I'm going the image. Basically, this is a preprocessor, and I go into Svelte, and then add the preprocess tag, sorry attribute. So I did that. Let's save this. So this is all I had to do: import image from Svelte image, and add this preprocess attribute and a property, and a corresponding. So, so notice that you 
call the image preprocessor as a function, but then you spread spread the result. You use the spread operator. Okay, once you do these things, your IMG tag will autom will get transformed to some degree. We will see. Um, let me restart the dev. Live reload enabled and created blah, blah, blah. Okay, it, it said something, we couldn't see it. So let me control C and kill this. And um, let me run build or run this manually, npm run build. So when we run uh, npm run build, it generates the production version and uh, it doesn't clear the screen. So we will be able to see what's going on a little bit better. Let's see. So you see, it says uh, created uh, public bundle.js and that's it. It completely ignored the image. The image preprocessor didn't really run. The reason is there is a, a, an unfortunate net bug in in the in this. So I have listed that here. Uh, one of the caveats is that the uh, hard the static folder is hard coded assumption, meaning to say you we call um, in Svelte projects, uh, the public folder is called public, but uh, Svelte image uh, assumes that you're using it with Sapper, and Sapper uses the word static for the same thing. So I'm going to rename this to from public to static. But then, of course, that breaks our rollup config JS. So let's fix that. Wherever the word public was used, we will have to use the word static. So static, 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 and static, and that's it. Those are the those are all the places. Now, when I run npm run the build, maybe maybe something will happen. It says created static build bundle JS. Yes, but did it actually do anything more than that? Let's find out in our static. Oh, yes, something happened. Look, a new folder called G slash images was created and logo.png was placed in there. So if I now examine, remember my original image that I was trying to, uh, sh uh, to show on the page was let me see ls minus l static slash images slash logo dot this is the original and it has generated slash static slash g slash images slash logo dot png and as you can see the original was 23 kilobytes the new one is 32 kilobytes a little it tried to optimize the image and instead of optimizing it it de-optimized it but that's not a problem we will i will show you that in other cases it will do a better job but in any case it generated a so-called optimized version of our image and that is the one that it will end up using um, let's find out if that's the case okay so now if i run dev Come back here and reload. Wait, is it running? Uh, hold on, why? What happened here? Um, where am I located? Hold on. I am in Svelte image demo and this is the right place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. I know why, why this broke because uh, in package.json, it still assumes public as this name of the folder. I have to change it to static. Save it. Okay, sorry about that. Now, if I run the and dev restart dev npm run dev okay so this time hopefully things will go better and i reload there you go that's my image now here's the thing my image is still not responsive but 
notice something. If I inspect it, it is now using g slash images slash logo dot png. It has been pre-processed. My img tag got pre-processed. I uh, didn't uh, benefit a whole lot beyond that, but it 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 can. There is one more thing it can do. It can be inlined. So let me show you by uh, what I mean by inlined. Um, if I go into rollup config js, and if right now it's 23 or 30 kil kilobytes, right? So it has a default um, inline threshold. Um, so if you look at the config and the the documentation, it says inline below 10,000, right? So I will say, okay, well, you should inline an image even if it is not 10,000, but uh, you know, let's say. So I'm in, in here. I'm giving. Um, configuration and make it from 10,000 to say 50,000, so 50 kilobytes. So I just did that. And now, because I made a change to rollup.config.js, I have to restart the dev um, process. So the task, restart task. So I just did that. And now, when I reload, first of all, um, yeah, this got inlined. You see that data, data image. This is data image PNG base 64. The image got inlined. So two things are happening. Even standard images, they A, get optimized and B, they get inlined. So this is just the beginning of the story, of course. Uh, but let's improve on it. In order to improve on it, we have to go from from using IMG tags to using the image components that this Swelt image provides. So let's say add the script tag and import image from Swelt image. So now this is a not the default export, so you have to be careful. So this is the non-default image component export and only thing you have to change is go, go from IMG to image, like that. Let me reformat this a bit. Okay, save it. And since I did not make any changes to rollup.config.js, I can simply, um, you know, go back to the application. Just reload it. Hopefully, it will work. Okay. I don't know if it is working. I'm not so sure if it is working, but let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like it is working. Let me see. Yeah, it's not working. Let me let me do hard, empty cache and hard reload. Sometimes cache, is, well, in this case, not even the cache is not the issue. So what happened? Let's see. Oh, it looks like there was an error. What is the error? Image is not exported. Ah, I see. So apparently, you're not supposed to use image like that. Okay, yeah. So you, the way you do that is you import image. Okay, it is the default export. Okay, all right. So we have to remove these curly braces. Save. And now hopefully it will. Okay, yeah, that worked. So no curly braces. Okay, now once you do that, ah, look at that. There was the blue color. Uh, placeholder and then it got replaced by the real thing and now the image itself is responsive uh, in the sense that it's getting larger as you resize the viewport but and then uh, you know if you inspect it you will see that it has um, it uses the 400 pixel version at this stage and uh, well I guess there isn't a bigger version because that the image itself, the original image is very small. Okay, now to make things a little more interesting, we have a whole bunch of images located here. Um, not here, sorry. In images, yes. So we have these images. Uh, these I downloaded from um, Pixum.photos. So thank you to them. Uh, but let's see if I start adding more images like that. So there it is, images slash 
zero one dot jpg and then this will be image zero one let's call it and we can just do a few more image two and three okay save it so now you will see that suddenly uh, the this thing has so many versions image one two and three and you can see the 400 pixel version jpeg and webp then 800 pixel jpeg and webp and as you can see these things so this is this is rather interesting as you can see that it generated 400 pixel 800 pixel and 1200 pixel of each of the images and both the jpeg as well as webp this is the result of uh, this pre-process okay one thing that you should notice is note is that you cannot have a dynamic uh, value of src you cannot get it with a um, you see uh, you cannot set the src value with a with a variable if you do that uh, this the system doesn't work as well um, at least the generation of the image generation doesn't happen so now you see these images were uh, you know blue placeholders and then they became uh, actual images now if i go to network tab clear the log and if i make this larger you will see that it has a larger version as you can see uh, sorry yes so 1200 pixel version and that's nice only thing is that once the image becomes responsive it will take all 100 percent of the space available to it so in case you want to uh, give it less space you have to wrap it in something so i'm going to say uh, div let's wrap this in a div and we can say style the div style is width 50 percent let's say and then put the image my the spinspire logo inside that once i save that now now it's taking 50 percent so so you can control it like that unfortunately setting width etc on the image component itself doesn't quite work as well um, let me show you a few other things but before let me just make sure i covered all the um, features so like i said it generates resized versions at build time you saw those it generates placeholder image with data url the blue color placeholder that you were seeing before the actually main image is loaded that is the day and that's the placeholder and then it loads lazy and what that means is that um, you know initially uh, if i reload this thing and go to network tab uh, let me then it has loaded okay well i guess it has loaded all of them let me let me clear the, let me do empty cache and hard reload and i don't know whether uh, the image number three has been loaded or not i guess it has um but if we had more images let's have more images just to demo the um let's demo the the full version i have this uh file demo dot spelled uh, so i have you know everything all the images spelled out in in full this way i don't have to sit here and type everything for you okay so let me just copy these and paste oops something happened didn't quite work what, what happened here uh, let me see demo dot swelt i'm just going to copy these copy and paste them okay that's better so now i have these 20 images and then it will be easier to see the lazy loading part in fact there is a much better way to see the lazy loading i'll show you in a second so if i just go to network and instead of using full online mode i use slow 3g connection and once you do that right click 
empty cache and hard reload. And then you can see lazy loading and full swing. So initially, of course, you will see placeholder and the and you can see image number 0, 1, 0, 3, and 0, 2. Those have been downloaded. Uh, maybe others have not. Let me clear this network log. And as I scroll down, wow, oh, looks like it has, hold on, something. Wait, is this correct? Oh, it was not fully reloaded. Okay, yeah. So let's see. Yep, so that's the placeholder. And as we, so it's taking, it's, it's behaving much slower because we are simulating slow 3G connection over there. Uh, you can see where my mouse is, the slow 3G. And uh, now if I clear this and scroll down, and as I scroll down, you will see images being lazy loaded. So that's what we mean by lazy loading. By now, I'm sure it's pretty clear to you. Okay. And as you can see right now, the, this is a placeholder. This placeholder was generated uh, by Svelte image. Okay. All right. So that's what we mean by lazy loading. And then it injects the picture tag and SRC set attribute. What that means is that you put only the image component and it has the, it wrapped the image IMG in a picture tag and SRC set, which indicates different images, image files for different uh, viewport sizes or screen resolutions available. So all this is HTML5. Uh, and this is very nice because now in a very small um, window size, so if I make it like mobile phone, let's say, right? Uh, it will, and I go to network. And uh, if I right click and say empty cache and hard reload, although this will be somewhat slow, but not as slow as we were seeing things when we were, um, using a full full width viewport. Uh, so the user experience is much better. As you can see, the placeholders are showing up rather quickly. And then, uh, you know, more images get loaded. The first placeholders followed by the actual image. Remember, we are simulating a 3G, slow 3G connection. That's why it's showing up like this. And as you can see, it is uh, displaying the 400 pixel version of these images as opposed to what it does when we make it full size and now it, it'll start downloading the uh, the 1200 pixel and the the beautiful thing is that it you'll see the, these things are blurry at first and then they get uh, you know well defined because it uses the old image first just stretches it and when the new image becomes available then it it so you see this will get uh, you know better definition as time passes and the see as you can see this is so much clearer now so that's what lazy loading is all about um, now remote image tag so when the source the source of the image is a remote url what are, what does your remote url basically mean it's not on the same server where uh, it's not the the image is not available at build time basically that's what it's all about so when that happens um, you still have some features available not all the features it is already doing the lazy loading and let me prove that to you if i use a uh, let's go to uh, if i use an image and i'm going to put it at the bottom and i'm going to make this source https pick some and dot photos slash mm, all well, i'll see seed and th this is i'm doing a random image generation seed foo slash let's say 2000 pixel width and 1000 height dot jpg and this will be we'll call this random image let's see uh, so as you can see this is an example of a remote uh, url okay so you some of the features may not be available but still even then quite a few will be 
and uh, let's see if this thing okay i should probably not simulate um This is slow, of course, because I'm simulating 3G connection, right? Uh, so if I go to the bottom, let me go from slow 3G to online. Maybe that'll speed things up. Yes. So this is the new image, okay? As you can see, the image is, is um, you know, visually responsive, so it it that's a good thing, right? And and uh, it will have some of the other facilities. So, so it does lazy loading. Now let's see, is it doing lazy loading? Let's find out. Um, if I am not, if I go to the top, and I right click and and say empty cache and hard reload. So this is faster, yes. But then if I go to the very bottom, and if that image is, you see, it, mm, did it just download the, the random picture? I think it did. So this is ID 236. Let me do it one more time. Go to the top. Now this ID 236, this uh, ID 236 should not be loaded in the beginning. That would prove it to us. Okay, clear. Do we have ID 236? No. So it is being lazy loaded. As I scroll down, if I see ID 236 being loaded, then, then that's true. So here, do I see ID 236? There it is. This is ID 236. So yes, the image was absolutely loaded lazily. So yes, so I was saying that um, a remote image, when the source is a remote image, it still does uh, load lazily, but uh, more advanced features such as downloading it, uh, creating a placeholder, creating different resized versions, etc., will be supported in the next version. The current version that, as of this recording, is 0. 19, I think. Let me make sure that is the current version. Um, the current version, the released version is 0 0.1.9. That's right. So as of this recording, it's 0 0.1.9, and the subsequent one will support remote uh, images fully. Okay. Now, as you saw, we started with this plain IMG tag. So it did. It does generate the uh, the Opt, quote unquote optimized versions of the image at build time, which in our case, because the image was very small, the optimized version turned out to be larger than the original. But anyway, um, and then it we saw in our example when we set uh, the threshold, this inline below to 50 kilobytes, it replaced the whole image with a data URL. So which by by which I mean this, the entire image gets replaced with a data URL. Okay, so that's there. Now, mm, and there are a few caveats. One of them was that pub, your folder uh, in default swell template, the public folder is called public, and they don't like this. Uh, Swelt image requires your, it has a strange assumption that uh, the public folder is called static and um, it is a hard coded one. So you cannot change it through configuration, but hopefully uh, this will get fixed uh, as soon as possible. So right now you just have to rename your public folder to static. Um, okay, and then other was you cannot have a variable determining the source URL. It has to be known at build time. Then only the uh, build time image generation works, the processing works. And then sometimes you have to set the ratio attribute of the image component. 
and you may have to add the wrapper to control the width, which we already showed. I showed you that I had to add a wrapper here in uh, in in here. So this is um, this is because I want to control the width. If I want to make width 50%, I cannot control it here. I have to do it in a wrapper. This will always be 100% width. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is the ratio. Uh, sometimes I have to set a ratio. If if the size of something cannot be known at build time, um, usually it tries to determine the height to width ratio at build time. But if it doesn't, then you may have to set a ratio equal to say 50%, meaning to say width is twice the size of height. Height is 50% of width. So that thing you may have to sometimes do. All right, so those are the caveats. And uh, now I hope uh, you can see the benefit. Before we end though, I want to show you uh, other options, other very interesting options. One is um, called if I go here in the documentation, there is an option. There are various options. You can see optimize all equal to true, which means whether to optimize IMG tags or not. This is in line below. And there is other things like, uh, I like this one called placeholder equal to trace or blur. So let me copy this placeholder and let me go into my uh, rollup config and set the option. So where it is, where is it? yeah, here. So here I can paste this. And instead of trace, which is the default, let's make it blur. So trace is what you were seeing, a placeholder with blue color, and uh, it's an SVG generated image. Uh, I found that blur is much better. And uh, I'll, I'll show you. I do, because I am making changes to rollup config.js, I have to restart the dev task. So here we go, let's restart. So once we restart, now keep in mind, uh, by the way, see it is it is saying SRC is external. So once you, uh, once the upgrade comes in the next version, the remote uh, will be properly processed. So let's go back here. And now you see the placeholders are not blue color SVG vectors. They are the blurred version of the same image. And I find that it's a, I think it's network wise better. So as let's go to network, clear this and see, you will see that this is the blurred version. You see the blurred version, you don't see a, a uh, by the way, you there is no blurred version of this because this could not be generated at build time. These will have blurred versions. So if I now, okay. So by the way, as you can see, this is a, an example of ratio being a little messed up. It, it, it is giving extra empty space. To fix that, I have to go back in here and I'm going to show you how to use the ratio in this. Because at build time, it cannot, cannot be determined, the ratio of height and width. Here, I am giving a ratio of 50% because I am fetching width 2000 pixel and height 1000 pixels. So save it. And now the ratio is provided and the empty white space will, will be gone. As you can see again, these blurry words. And now there's no empty, I'm, I'm scrolling down to the very bottom and there is no empty white space be, below this image. Because earlier it was assuming a ratio of 100% uh, height and width being equal. But since height is half of the width, it's, it has to be um, told what the ratio is. So, and then the other thing I, I wanted to, to uh, point out to you is that the, uh, set, the, uh, the placeholder setting, which used to be trace, is now set to blur. And once it is set to blur, uh, the placeholder is the blurry version of the same image. When, let me change it back to trace and then you will see the difference. It will go back to being a blue color uh, SVG vector. So let me restart again. And now once it reloads, okay, of course it's it's loading the old version of, 
So I have to right click and say empty cache and hard reload. This time it will, okay, something didn't work. Is it working? Oh, it's still restarting, that's why. Okay. All right, that's better. So now if I, it'll reload. I can ask it to reload. You see that it went back to blue, blue placeholder, blue color SVG images as placeholders. So that's that's the difference between uh, blur and trace. All right, I hope you learned something. So just to recap, um, the name of the module is Swelt Image, which allows you to do responsive and lazy loaded images with very minimal effort. As you can see, uh, it all you have to do is use the image component. You can even use the IMG tag. That will also be taken care of, but then the features are slightly limited. It's a beautiful uh, module. It follows the philosophy of Svelte. Uh, so I hope you use it. You can use it also with, with the sapper, of course. Um, but I like nowadays, I like to do things totally static, compile time, uh, generation of code. So, and, and Svelte image does work with it. Um, the only thing is it requires, like I said, in one of the uh, caveats, it requires the name of the public folder to be static. And that's the only problem with it. Other than that, it's a beautiful module. Uh, I will be filing a bug for that so that it, the bug gets uh, resolved soon. But this was the Svelte image module. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.